33 million miles from the sun People get ready, get ready Cause here it comes It's a light, a beautiful light Over the horizon, into our eyes Oh my, my, how beautiful Oh my, beautiful mother sh Mabuhay Pilipinas and hello to the rest of the world. Welcome to your new companion in looking at the church, the world, and the society from the religious point of view. Join us for your weekly dose of inspiration and information straight from the consecrated men and women of the Philippines. We are your Kahabits, the, the Philippine South, South Province of the Physicians of God Moscow. Moscow. And welcome sa masaya good vibes na the Habits Tambayan. Mabuhay Filipinas and hello to the rest of the world. Welcome to your new companion in looking at the church, the world and the society from the religious point of view. This is your Kahabit, Sister Happy Montesilio of the Daughters of St. Anne. Join us for your weekly dose of inspiration and information Welcome, Sister Adele, Provincial. <laughs> Parang kailan <laughs> lang, you. it was in the religious report, that we reported about your new um, assignment or new role or new ministry as Provincial. Parang wow, what an honor to have a guest co-host <laughs> na <laughs> Provincial. <laughs> really, Sister, um, congratulations. But at the same time, really, have a good mission, have a blessed mission in your new ministry. Thank and you, thank sister. you for this, uh, for coming and for accepting our invitation for this uh, program, The Habits. Thank you. Kumusta na po kayo, sister? I mean, how many months na po kayo naging provincial? No, wala pang one month. Ah, Just started last January 1. Ah, okay. <laughs> ah, so, how is it, sister? How do you feel? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's not yet honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's still looking at something to adjust. Wow, yeah. Because in every new beginning, it's, I mean, we know that it's not that easy. Yeah. Diba, mm -hmm. sister? At the same time, parang, I was also wondering, bakit kayo si Sister Adele? Nasaan si Father Angel? Pero really, Sister Adele, because our topic, this, I mean, the, in the segment, our topic is something about anti-human trafficking and you know sister adele before she was elected or as before she was appointed as provincial she was then in the tkp ano nga yung tkp sister talitakum <laughs> asia yeah mm -hmm. philippines and ay, philippines talitakum philippines talitakum philippines and asia okay so you want sister adele so welcome again sister thank to you to the sir. habits Thank you. <laughs> Sister, ano pong nangyari? I mean, how were you involved in this ministry um, against human trafficking? Kaw mo na interview ko, Sister. <laughs> oh, I was involved of our project, uh, Salvatorian Pastoral Care for Children. And there was once occasion that the AMRSP was inviting us to join the Talitakum Conference. Mm. And I think they, they, there was also a general assembly. And that time, when I was around, they told me that the animator of Talitakum Philippines and Talitakum uh, Southeast Asia uh, is leaving. Mm -hmm. I think she got uh, the new assignment. So there was an appointment who will be the, the next uh, animator and uh, they <laughs> Appointed <laughs> me, <laughs> and mm, maybe it's a call. I said yes. Mm -hmm. But I was what I know is by profession you are also a social worker, right? Yes, sister? I am. So talagang timing or parang patungot patungot talaga don yung ministry na saan kayo na involved, di yes. ba, sister? Yes. Wow, it's nice. It's okay. nice. So, yes, yeah, sister. <laughs> uh, mga kahabits. Kaninong buhay kaya ang itatampok natin ngayong araw? At papano siya konektado kay St. Josephine Bakita? Sino nga ba si St. Josephine Bakita? Nako, yan ang mga dapat ninyong abangan ngayon. 
Pero bago ang lahat ng yan, go first to our Facebook page. Go to facebook.com slash amrsp.org at huwag niyong kalimutang mag-like and follow dahil malapit na tayong mag-10,000 followers. Mm. Mga kahabits, alam mo bang pwede na ring online ang suporta? By sending us some stars, you can buy stars and send them to us during the live broadcast. You can also send animated virtual gifts attached to different star amounts that will appear in our stream. For every star that we receive, we earn 0.01 US dollars. Mga kahabits, you can click the star icon next to the chat bar to try sending stars yourselves. But take note, it's only available sa AMRSP Facebook page. At kahabits, mapapanood din tayo not just on Facebook, pati sa YouTube. Punta lang sa aming YouTube channel, AMRSP Media. Just like, watch, share our videos, and don't forget to subscribe. Buko dyan, mga kahabits, mapapanood din tayo sa TV Maria every Sunday nights at 8.30pm with replays every Thursdays at 6am and 10pm. Simulan na natin ang ating information routine. Here is the religious reports. Leading our stories today on the religious reports. 2021 World Day of Consecrated Life. Almost 400 consecrated men and women from different religious congregations and secular institutes gathered at the Santo Domingo Church for a solemn Eucharistic celebration presided by the Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, His Excellency, the Most Reverend Charles John Brown D.D., in celebration of the 25th World Day of Consecrated Life, Tuesday, February 2. The Mass, organized by the AMRSP, started with a blessing of candles as part of the celebration of the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord, or traditionally called Candle Mass. During his homily, Nuncio Brown dwelt on the light of truth, encouraged the religious to live the truth, and become sons and daughters of truth in the age of fake news spread through the internet and where lying is common. The Nuncio said that we need to learn how to unmask the various ways the truth is manipulated, distorted, and concealed in public and private discourse. Quoting the Apostolic Letter, Fratelli e Sorelle Tutti, the Nuncia also challenged the consecrated to fight against the lies that are both in us and around us. Then the devotional renewal of vows followed after led by AMRSP Vice Co-Chairperson Father Will de la Cruz, SSS. Toward the end of the celebration, Sister Marilyn Java, RC, AMRSP Co-Chairperson, delivered a short thanksgiving message stating that at the core of every consecrated person's vocation is making God's love shine forth in various ways by practicing prophetic vocation in the midst of insidious and blatant attempts to ignore others systematically. The World Day of Consecrated Life was instituted by St. John Paul II in 1997 celebrated on the Feast to the Presentation of the Lord, an eloquent icon of the total offering of one's life by means of evangelical councils, the characteristic features by Jesus, the chaste, poor, and obedient one. More reports from the Consecrated Life Co Vadis as part of our celebration of the World Day of Consecrated Life, 
the AMRSP organized a web conference entitled Covaris Lights, Shadows, and New Frontiers for Consecrated Men and Women with the Master of the Order of Preachers, Very Reverend Father or Brother Gerard P. Timur III O.P. as keynote speaker, Tuesday afternoon, February 2, 2021. Father Timur's keynote speech reflected on Pope Francis' apostolic letter addressed to the consecrated people during the year of consecrated life and invited men and women to look at the past with gratitude, to live the present with passion, and to embrace the future with hope. Father Timor said the Filipinos are now ready to return the gift and lead the Catholic Church. He also said, we quote, we have received a faith and after 500 years, we are ready to give the same gift, end of quote. Making His Excellency Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle and Most Reverend Bernardito C. Ausadidi as examples of the Philippine Church's gift to the world. And now here's a report from the Holy See and the Universal Church. Prayer Marathon The Talita Cum of the Union of International Superior Generals or UISG in Rome is inviting everyone to a marathon of prayer in celebration of the 7th International Day of Prayer and Awareness Against Human Trafficking on Monday, February 8th. The Marathon of Prayers will be live-streamed in youtube.com slash c slash preghiera contratata starting at 5 p.m. in Philippine time and will end at 12 midnight. This seven-hour online marathon will be in five different languages with prayers and testimonies from international realities involved against human trafficking. New Feast Days The Holy Father Pope Francis approves four new liturgical memorials of six saints which will be added to the Roman calendar according to the decrees released by the Congregation of Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments on Tuesday, February 2. One decree inscribed the memorial of Saints Martha, Mary, and Lazarus into the Roman calendar on 29 July and all liturgical books worldwide will be updated and will include the prayers and texts proper to these three companions of Jesus. Pope Francis made the decision to add this liturgical memorial based on the important evangelical witness they offered in welcoming the Lord Jesus into their home and listening to Him attentively and in believing that He is the resurrection and the life. In a separate decree, Pope Francis inscribed three optional memorials in the Roman calendar for three doctors of the church, namely St. Gregory of Narek on February 27, St. John de Avila on May 10, and St. Hildegard of Bingen on September 17. And now, here's our reports from the Philippine Church. See up against red tagging. The Catholic Education, Educational Association of the Philippines released their statement Saturday, January 30, encouraging the government to address the roots of the problem of insurgency, like poverty and marginalization, rather than red tag educational institutions, and state that continued red tagging will not help but only endangers the security and welfare of teachers and students. SIAP made their statement after the military has earlier identified the Ateneo de Manila University, University of Santo Tomas, de la de Sal University, Ateneo de Naga University, and Holy Angel University as among the schools that are allegedly hotbeds of rebel recruitment and radicalization. The CF assured the government that Catholic schools can never support 
any armed struggle because they are committed to nation building through peaceful and non-violent means. The CIAP, which has more than 1,500 schools in its rosters, also stressed the importance of upholding academic freedom, which provides our society a space free from external constraints where truth can be shifted from untruth and right from wrong. Obando National Shrine The Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines voted in favor of the petition to declare the San Pascual Bailon Parish Diocesan Shrine of Nuestra Señora de la Immaculada Conception di Salambao in Ab Ab Abando, Bulacan, into a national shrine during their online plenary assembly. Wednesday, January 27, the popular pilgrimage site widely known for its fertility festival in Bulacan, province of the fourth national shrine in the Diocese of Malolos, and now joins the 26 other churches across the country with such title. The Obanda Church was founded by the Franciscan missionaries on April 29, 1754. In the 250th year of the parish in 2004, the venerated image of Our Lady of Salambao was granted an episcopal coronation, the first of its kind in the Diocese of Malolos, by Bishop Jose Oliveros in 2007. The same bishop elevated the parish as a diocesan shrine in honor of Our Lady as Nuestra Señora de la Immaculada Concepción de Salambao. No date has been set yet for the right for formally declare the parish as a national shrine. That's it for those of stories from the consecrated life the church and the world. Join us in our next episodes for more of The Religious, Religious Reports. Reports. Every February 8th, we observe the day of anti-human trafficking. And the church also honors the feast of St. Josephine Baquita, patroness of trafficking victims. Coincidence? I think not. And so today here on The Habits, we will celebrate the life of one of the great and remarkable saints of the Catholic Church. Welcome to another episode of Habits Spoken. And for this week's episode, we will hear the stories of a Canosian sister who has a special encounter with St. Josephine Baquita during her postulancy 20 years ago. Let's hear, let's hear it as she shares her life with St. Josephine Baquita, exclusive here in The Habits. Let us welcome to the show our guest sharer, none other than Sister Magnolia Nuncio, FDCC, from the Canossian Sisters of Charity, as she habits spoken. Welcome to the habits spoken, Sister Magnolia. Welcome, Sister. Wow, you look so young and fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm <laughs> still fresh at, at my age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice to see you around, sister. Kumusta po kayo? How are you doing, Mabuti sister? Naman po. Uh, I'm good. Naman po. Busy, no? But oh, sister, busy, you look but young. still. Uh, 
How young yeah, are you? I'm 44 years old, sister. Wow. 44 years old. Oh, hindi makikita Not that sa young. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still old, older than you, sister, by age. <laughs> And then daw po kapag, di ba, kapag na, Kapag daw po nagmamahal at minamahal ng Diyos, hindi daw po yes. uh, tumatanda. Yes. No? <laughs> Tama po yun. Anong probinsya po ninyo? Nova, is- Nova Isihana. I'm from Nueva Isiha. Oh. Oh. Pero no, uh, I was born here no, in Science City of Monyos, Nueva Isiha. Wow. Mm. Kung saan ka ba? Saan po ako, ako nakaako sa aking look pang silangan para maglingkod after 18 years na protest sister po wow. nakabalik po ako last year this is my second year uh, serving our diocese my own diocese, the diocese of San Jose de Nueva Ecija wow. you see, no, no. direct from Nueva Ecija you see what technology can do, can connect us to one another yes <laughs> the virtual platform possible lahat. <laughs> ano po involvement niya ngayon, sister? What's your ministry? Yes, yeah, sister. Your ministry? Presently, I am assigned as the coordinator of the Diocese Commission on Catechesis. And also, I am the community leader of our community. Okay. Wow, talaga ha. So marami ding activity si Sister Magnolia. But oh, thank you Sister na pinaunlakan mo ang aming imbitasyon. And thank you for really accepting this um I mean the, thank you for ex- accepting this invitation. And we are excited Sister kasi kanina yung may nagsabi kasi sa amin, nagbulong, sabi niya, you interview Sister Magnolia, maganda yung story niya, and it's very inspiring. Timing din, mm. no? Timing, coincidence, whatever it is. Pero yes, we are sorry. celebrating the feast of St. Josephine Bakita. I remember, I was postulant nung nabasa ko rin yung story niya, and really very inspiring. And for sure, for you as Canosian, wow, mas lalo pa, kasi mas kilala niyo pa ng malalim si St. Josephine Bakita. And that's what we are curious to know, sister. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, sister, yes, um, yeah, we know your name, yung basic, di ba? Your name, your age, <laughs> saan kayo, what's, what's, saan kayo ngayon, but really, sister, now that we know you, uh, we want to know you deeper. Um, looking back po dun sa Your younger years, you're saying that 18 years na po kayo as profess when you were a student or a teenager. Um, did you already have a calling to become a religious sister? Vocation story, sister. <laughs> Oops. Yes po. Uh, I heard God's call as early as five years old. Ganun wow. po kaaga akong tinawag ng Diyos. No? We all know Uh, that religious life po is we are called to be faithful. <laughs> Pero yung po yung irony ng call sa akin ng Diyos, I discover God's call because of unfaithfulness. <laughs> the unfaithfulness of my two grandfathers. <laughs> Kasi po sila po ay uh, both father's side and mother's side na grandfathers ko po ay they had other family. But don't get, ano, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I love them. Just the same despite of their unfaithfulness. Uh, one morning, I overheard my mother uh, talking to my only brother. Sabi niya, Eric, magpari ka na lang para may magdadasal sa kaluluwa ng iyong dalawang lolo no, na parehong may other family. Tapos narinig ko, sabi ko, Mami, Mami, ako din magpapari para tag-isa kami ni Kuya. <laughs> sabi ng Mami ko, hindi ko pwedeng magpari kasi babae ka, magmadre ka. So sabi ko, from there, <laughs> doon ko unang narinig yung word na magmadre. So from there, sabi ko, ah, lagi ko nang ninanakaw yung pillowcase ng Mami ko. Yung puting pillowcase nilalagay ko sa ulo ko. <laughs> so sabi ko, madre ako. <laughs> Kaya yun ay sinasabi ko na. 
Her sister at that young age, you remember that event? Pero may mga nakita na rin ba kayong madre? Yes. I Hello. Madre, pero hindi hindi ganun ang encounter with the priest kasi yung mga pare, sila yung nagmimisa, sila yung pumupunta sa bahay namin, nakikikain pagkatapos ng misa. <laughs> kasi yung mother ko ay active noon na barangay pastor, sa barangay pastoral council. So, syempre, pag siya yung leader sa, sa inyong kakain yung pare, no? Tapos, laging kapag manok ang ulam, yung atay sa pare, no? Yung hita sa pare. <laughs> so, parang na-inspire ako magpare. Tapos, lalo na nung sinabi sa akin, nang, narinig ko na sinabi ng mother ko sa brother ko na magpare. <laughs> at what age? Madre. I know, madre, uh, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry? At what age mo kayong pumasok, sister? Uh, 22 years old. I entered uh-huh. 22 years old. Mm-hmm. So, so I right heard age. kanina, you're an IT graduate. So that means before kayo pumasok, nag-graduate na po kayo, sister. Yes. Uh, though... Uh, God called me in a, uh, parang ang aga-aga, but I started my search for vocation after no, college pa, no, college pa, kaya medyo uh, 22 years old, after college na ako nag, uh, nag uh, decide, no, pero naghanap ako, serious search for my vocation after I attended the World Youth Day. Isa po ako sa naging produkto. Alam ko, maraming mga naging produkto ng World Youth Day na naging madre at pare. Second year college po ako noon. Mm-hmm. Noong World Youth Day na yon. At uh, kasi po, uh, sabi ko nga, ang aga nung aking bukasyong narinig ko yung tawag ng Diyos. Pero dumating ako sa time noon na nakalimutan ko yung bukasyon na yon. Actually, kinalimutan. <laughs> Kasi di ba, when I was in college and early, uh, I was in high school and early year of college, in college, parang I was talking Greek kapag nagsasabi ako na magmamadre ako. Kaya para hindi ako magmukhang alien, itinago ko muna yung bukasyon. But after World Youth Day, doon ko talaga naramdaman when I saw Pope John Paul II, I was crying. Iyak ako ng iyak. No? Nung makita ko siya dun sa kanyang mobile car, I cried. At ramdam naramdam ko yung aura ng holiness. Yung amoy na amoy yung small, smell ng holiness ni Pope John Paul II. At muli bumalik sa akin yung desire na maging sister. At sa totoo lang, sisters, namang kapo ako sa dalawang ilog. <laughs> No? Kasi that time, I am in a relationship. <laughs> And then I am searching also for God's will. Like congregation happy po ako from 1996 to 2008. And I entered February 9, 2000. Siguro ma- maano niyo yung journey ko, no? Dahil dun sa piyesta ni Bakita, 8, then 9, I entered the congregation. Wow, so, sister. Uh, parang naramdam ako, really God knows when and how to touch our hearts. So, yes. So, sister, bitinin muna natin ang ating heart-to-heart talk and we will continue after the short break. And when we come back, mga kahabits, we will get to hear how Sister Magnolia encountered St. Josephine Bakita. Hmm. I'm sure you don't want to miss it. And only here in your weekly information and inspiration companion, this is The, the Habit. Habit. Uh, nag-decide ako na sa kanila pumasok. Mag-try. Uh, uh, nakijourney ako sa kanila. Ang problema, ayaw akong payagan ng father ko. <laughs> And ang ginawa ko, I ran away from home. Nagtanan po ako kasama ni Jesus no? na ikinagalit ng tatay ko. Pero napatawad naman po niya ako after a month. Pagkatapos ng dalawang oras na iyakan namin noong bumalik po ako sa bahay kasama yung mga madre.
Hoy sigue habiendo mujeres que sufren violencia, violencia psicológica, violencia verbal, violencia física, violencia sexual. Es impresionante el número de mujeres golpeadas, ofendidas, violadas. Las distintas formas de malos tratos que sufren muchas mujeres son una cobardía y una degradación para toda la humanidad, para los hombres y para toda la humanidad. Los testimonios de las víctimas que se atreven a romper su silencio son un grito de socorro que no podemos ignorar, no podemos mirar para otro lado. Recemos por las mujeres que son víctimas de la violencia para que sean protegidas por la sociedad y para que su sufrimiento sea considerado y sea escuchado por todos. Talita Kum ay Kalinga. Talita Kum is companionship. Talita Kum Jorta hai. Talita Kum ni musika man. Talita Kum e prevención. Talita Kum e hi termim l karami. Talita Kum se protege. Talita Kum an hananim e yeljangimnida. Talita Kum is solidarity. Talita Kum is connections. Talita kum si longjie i a. Talita kum ira laisve. Talita kum es compromiso. Talita kum fo domin ba otras. Talita kum es peturaj. Talita kum es empoderamiento. Talita kum ogono. Talita kum es expresa. And we're back here in the habits. So, Sister Magnolia, a while ago, we talked about your calling and how, and now we maybe ask, what makes you enter the consecrated life? Of course, you mentioned about that encounter during the World Youth Day, but how did you learn about the Canosian sisters and what made you stay, wow, 18 years in the Canosian mm -hmm. congregation? Okay, um, when I decided to enter the congregation in year 2000, uh, February 9, 2000, because of the emptiness inside, parang may nararamdaman akong kulang, parang I want more. That time I graduated no, from college and serve, I am serving as parish youth leaders ng 
leader ng aming parokya and at the same time, diocese and youth leader ng aming diocese. May service din ako nun sa, sa, sa aming barangay as uh, SK chair person and also member din ng SK federation ng aming bayan. No? Tapos I am in a relationship pero parang may kulang. Yun yung, yun yung aking pinupunuan. Parang I want more. Masayang paglingkod sa simbahan, sa society, pero parang may kunang pa rin. So, uh, nakita ko, may nakilala akong isang madre one time in our service in Bulubundukin ng Karamlan. No? Ito yung pinaka mabundok na parokya ng aming diocese at kung saan nagpapasilitate kami ng youth encounter. And I was edified doon sa madre niyo, yung kanyang zeal and commitment. Then, after two days, I met again another Tanoshan, a jolly Tanoshan in our parish kasi nag-vocation promotion sila. At uh, I come to know na isa sa kanilang apostolate ay youth ministry. At dahil malapit yung puso ko sa youth ministry, uh, nag-decide ako na sa kanila pumasok, mag-try, no? Uh, nahi-journey ako sa kanila. Ang problema, ayaw akong payagan ng father ko. <laughs> And ang ginawa ko, I ran away from home. Nagtanan po ako kasama ni Jesus no? na ikinagalit ng tatay ko. Pero napatawad naman po niya ako after a month, pagkatapos ng dalawang oras na iyakan namin noong bumalik po ako sa bahay kasama yung mga madre, para formal nila ako na ipagpaalam. At uh, what made me stay sa kanungsyan po, uh, yung pong pagmamahal ng Diyos, no? yung unfathomable love of God na naranasan ko po sa mga madre kasama ko kahit may mga pagkakamali. Nung nagka-crisis po ako, sila yung nagpalakas ng loob ko, sila yung sumuporta sa akin. At ganun din po yung mga taong nakasama ko sa sa apostolate, yung mga partners in the apostolate, especially the young people. Kasi most mm. of my 18 years po ay working with the young people. Wow, really. No? You see how, how really God touched our heart and also yung mga what's our inclination or what attracts us. And of course, In your journey, sister, nung nagpunta na si, ay, nung nagpunta na mga madre, nagpa, pina, pinapaalam ni kanila sa mother mo, and then then you started your formation as parency and postulancy, and it was there that you you met, or you know, also St. Josephine Bakita. Yes, po. Pero... So, is a special tribute to St. Josephine Bakita For the knowledge of our mga kahabits, St. Josephine Bakita is a Canosian sister too, just like Sister Magnolia. And so, Sister, how did you know about St. Bakita? What special encounter did you have with her? Um... Mas nakilala ko po una si St. Josephine Bakita rather than our foundress. No? Remember yeah. that encounter with a jolly sister in our parish? Mm-hmm. Uh, she handed to me a comics of Bakita. Hindi ko na po maalala kung Bakita and Magdalene. Pero yung story po kasi ni St. Josephine Bakita is very dramatic, di ba? No? Very, yeah. talaga mo makikita mo na yung suffering na pinag, uh, pinagtaanan niya. Kaya yun po yung medyo mas nakakuha sa aking attention. Mm-hmm. At uh, doon ko po siya unang nakilala nung makilala, nung bigyan po ako ng comics nung madre na nakilala ko. Pero yung journey ko po pala sa kanya ay nagumpisa na. Because when I decided to enter the, the, the convent in January 1 po sana, ah, no, sorry, January 2, year 2000, makasok na po sana ako. Yun yun na yung pagpakas ko sa bahay. <laughs> Ang kaso po, magkabatch po kami ni Sister Chato. Dalawa po talaga kami. Yes. Siya po yung kasama ko na nag-aantay na sa San Pablo. Yun po yung aming... 
uh, formation house no? for postulancy, nagkasakit po ako, nagkaroon po ako ng tonsillitis na matagal ko na pong sakit yon. And the doctor decided na ooperahan ko, tatanggalin po ang tonsil ko. Kaya po medyo natagalan ako. Hindi po ako nakasabay kay Sister Chato. Then this sister, another sister, is journeying with me po. Binigyan po niya ako ng, uh, ng nobina ni St. Bakita. Sabi niya, magnobina ka. Kasi si St. Bakita, nag-grant siya ng healing. So I, I prayed the nobina. Huh? Tapos po, uh, nauna yung kuya ko, that time yung kuya ko may tonsillitis, then sabay po kami. At inuna po siyang operahan kasi ikakasal siya that time. Na dapat ako yung mauna kasi mas grabe, pero siya na nga lang kasi ikakasal siya. No? Hindi nila alam na ako din, meron din akong balak lumayas. No? <laughs> na gusto, gusto ko na rin magpa-opera. <laughs> pero yung pinagbigyan ko na, so nauna siyang magpa-opera. Pero nung ako na po ang operahan, uh, three days bago ako operahan, pinabalik po ako. And I am totally healed no? after that novena with St. Ba- Bakita. Now, sabi ng doktor sa akin na uh, parang ang bilis, ang bilis na heal, na, dapat na operahan na, pero bakit ang bilis na heal nung, nung tonsillitis ko? Then, yung time po na umalis ako sa bahay, ang paalam ko lang po sa kanila ay, I will go to San Pablo to teach computer. Kasi nga po, di ba, uh, homesite po yung natapos ko, computer science. Then, yung gabing yun, sa Kanosa po ako natulog. Dahil kinabukasan po, ihahatid nila ako sa Manila going to San Pablo. And, hindi ko po alam, I really don't know that that night, that day, February 8th, is her feast day. The time na umalis ako ng bahay, I decided to to follow him to say yes kahit na hindi ako pinayagan. So this, this is really the, the journey, my journey with Bahita. A journey of healing. At yan din pong uh, really timely her feast day na nakapag-decide ako to say yes to God. Sir, <laughs> okay, so para you see on that day na hindi mo alam, February 8th, yun pala yun. Pero it, for me, it's also very interesting, sister, kasi nga, um, you encounter St. Josephine Bakita even before your posture and sing up pala. Pero that's already start of the journey. Yes. And of course, mas mas nakilala mo pa siya after that. So sister, what were that or what are the traits or characters that you love about St. Josephine Bakitan, what important um, life lesson did you get from her? Yes, what I admire most kay St. Bakita is her silence yet active presence. No, Alam po natin na ang kanyang most of her her assignment ay portera na tagabukas po ng gig kung saan pumapasok yung mga bata, no? Kasi uh, nag-aaral sila sa loob ng kanosa. Doon lang po siya. Pero lahat ng makakita sa kanya, ang ngiti lang niya, no? Wala siyang sinasabi. Pero nai-edify sa kanyang presence, no? Meron po akong isang uh, hindi makalimutang story na sinabi ng isang madre namin noon na uh, yung presence ni Bahita na nakapagpagaling sa isang bata na hindi niya alam, no? May parent daw po na may daladalang anak niya na itong batang ito pala hindi nakakalakad. So parang nung nakita ng mother itong si St. Bakita, sabi niya, uh, kapag nahawakan ito ni St. Bakita, uh, baka gumaling. Kasi naririnig na, parang living saint kasi si St. Bakita noon sa kanila. So iniwan niya kay St. Bakita para alagaan na hindi niya sinasabing ito ay hindi pala nakakalakad. Pero nung bumalik ang mother from from work or from somewhere, nakita niya na naglalaro na si St. Bakita with that child, with, that, uh, with her child, na tumatakbo-takbo na yung batang yun. No? So, yung, uh, yung pagiging, yun nga, her silence, yet the active presence no, ni St. Bakita. Then another is yung few words, pero effective evangelizer po si St. Bakita. One time po, sinama siya sa pag-iikot for vocation, um, missionary vocation. At ang sinasabi lang po niya ay, be good, love the Lord, 
pray for those who didn't know Him. Pero pag narinig na ng mga tao yon na na-inspire sila no, to to follow that, that, that missionary vocation, to, to also to uh, respond to the missionary vocation. Then another thing, when when uh, a person, no, may isang tao na nakarinig sa kanyang story, sinabi sa kanya, sabi niya, poor thing, no? kasi nakakaawangan naman yung pinagdaanan niya. Then Saint Paquita said, I am not a poor thing because I belong to the master. Uh, yung po yung mga few words niya pero very effective in the works of evangelization and of course her forgiving heart no? nang tinanong po sa kanya kung, kung anong gagawin niya pag nakita niya yung mga kumidnap sa kanya nakakagulat po yung sinabi niya sabi niya po I will kneel down I will kiss their feet Dahil kung hindi sa kanila, hindi ko makikilala ang Diyos. At yan po yung isang journey na hinihingi ko sa kanya ngayon. Na sana magkaroon din ako ng heart like her. The forgiving heart. Because I also experience injustice po in our family. Na hindi ko alam kung makikita ko yung mga taong gumawa nito, ay magagawa ko yung sinabi ni Saint Pakita. Pero because of her inspiration, yun po yung aking laging dasal na magkaroon ako ng pusong gaya niya. Actually, my father po was killed. Uh, 2008, my father was killed. This, today po, um, today is his death anniversary, February 4, 2008. My father was killed. Binaril po ang tatay ko. At uh, Mat, mat, naging mahirap po yun. Yun yung sinasabi kong journey ko po ng crisis sa buhay ko bilang madre. Batang madre pa lang po ako ng junior sister. At na masakit po yun para sa akin. Malaki po yung naging uh, naging karanasang yung karanasang ito ay malaki, malaking uh, sakit na naidulot sa akin. Nag-isip po akong lumabas no, dahil sa pahiyaring ito. Pero dahil po sa pagmamahal ng mga madre, sa kanilang suporta, pinadala po ako sa, sa therapy, no, sa trauma therapy. Kasi nakikita po nila na iba na po yung aking pagtingin sa buhay. Lagi po akong, kunyari nanonood po kami at tapos may mga injustices na nangyayar. Sige, patiin mo, sana pinatay mo na kumalabas po yung anger sa akin. At napansin ko yun ng aming community leader. Salamat na lang po. At ang community leader namin yun ay formator. So alam niya na may nangyayari sa akin kakaiba. Pinadala po niya ako sa isang pari na uh, therapist, trauma therapist po. At ilang beses po, ilang paulit ulit, pa, balik-balik po ako sa kanya. Layo po nun from San Pablo to Tagaytay. Pero malaking tulong po yung nagawa nito sa akin. At lalo na po ngayong mga panahong ito, laging yun yung aking, aking lasal. No? Lalo na po kay si Pakita. Kasi at large po yung pumatay sa tatay ko. Until now, oh, many years ago, wala pa rin pong justice kami natanggap. Pero ang akin po ay uh, sana magkaroon ako ng puso na gaya ng kay Bahinta. Na kapag nakita ko siya, siguro sa langit man, no? I claim that I, I will go to heaven at pinagdadasal ko na nasa heaven din siya bago man lang siya namatay nandun na. Sana nandun na yung puso ko to, to forgive him sa ginawa niya sa amin, sa ginawa niya sa tatay. Are with you, sister, in that journey, in this journey. But really, Saint Josephine Bakita, she's really known for her humility and forgiving heart. Yeah. So, balikan natin, sister, kay Saint Josephine Bakita. Kung tatanungin kayo, how did she inspire your vocation and in your apostolate and in your faith? Uh, the whole life of Bakita is a uh, 
I love of simplicity and humility. Masabi nga po ni sister. At yan po yung isang inspiration sa akin. Yung, uh, when I, I was uh, asked by a formator, no? anong kaya mong gawin? No? Masabi niya gano'n sa akin. Anong may, no, no, sorry. Anong may contribute mo sa, sa Canocean Congregation? Sabi niya. So ang nasiisip ko, talent, sabi ko. I can sing, but I can I can sing in inside my CR. No? <laughs> I cannot play instruments, musical instruments. I can dance, but not that I uh, know that uh, that good. No? Hindi rin ako ganon kasi katalino. No, nakisip talaga ako. <laughs> then sabi niya sa akin, but you know how to love. So I said, yes, yes, sister. Sigurado ako yan. Then love with all your heart. So yun po yung ganon din kasi si Saint Bakita. Wala siya kaka, hindi po siya marunong. Nakakasunod siya pero pangalan lang, no? Hindi siya marunong. Marami siyang hindi alam. Pero yun po yung pinakita niya, yung kusong nagmamahal na simple at humble at mapagpatawad ng puso. At yun po yung malaking naging uh, karanasan ko kay St. Bakita. Na-inspire po ako doon sa kanyang, uh, kanyang halimbawa. And lalo na po noong uh, inilagay siya bilang patron, patron saint po ng anti-human trafficking. Tama-tama din po na parang na-renew yung aking uh, pagmamahal pahay bakita dahil nung ako po before this uh, before uh, ma-assign po ako dito sa San Jose nasa Diocese of Gumaha po ako Quezon for 6 years at dun po ako po isa sa pinadala noon para mag uh, seminar po para sa anti-human trafficking at dun ko nalaman na si St. Chong Sipin Bakita pala ang patron saint noon at Ang Diyos ay nagpapadala sa akin ng maraming bagay, maraming uh, situation para ipaglaban ang karapatan ng mga taong uh, taong niyuyurakan ni, ni ang kanilang karangalan. May mga nakakatakot po na ipinaglalaban kami, no? para, lalo lalo na po yung mga issues para sa mga batang uh, kapataan na nag-i-involve sa o ginagamit ng mga malalaking tao para pagkakitaan. Uh, nakakatakot din po, pero through the prayers of Pakita, alam ko namang i-intercede po niya ako. Hindi po ako takot humarap sa mayor. No? Pumupunta po kami <laughs> kaharap sa mayor para uh, isakdal ang mga tao ito kahit malalaki sila, kahit mga makapangyarihan sila. At uh, alam ko po na sa ginagawa ko ito, medyo uh, magiging medyo delikado po yung sitwasyon. Pero gaya ng sabi ko po, I know St. Bakita will intercede for this work because this, is, uh, this work is uh, very close to her heart. And of course, God is always with us dahil alam niyang ito'y pinaglalaban namin ay uh, it really inspiring, sister. It takes courage and really strong faith to fight for what we believe that is good for our, for our people. And now, sister, you may invite our audience to read, know more about the story of Saint Bakita, and you may also have, um, how can I say, you can. You can also you can tell more about Saint Augustine Bakita. I mean, you can you can promote. I mean, you can also leave a message for a message of hope mm -hmm. and inspiration based from the life of our dear saint. Thank you, for sister. Yes, po. Thank you, po. So, uh, Saint Bakita is called Universal Sister. Pinatawag din po siyang Universal Sister, dahil marami pong hindi nakakakilala sa kanya, pero na encounter nila ng hindi inaasahan. So, uh, inaanyayahan ko po kayo na muli pang explore ang buhay ni Saint Bakita. Marami pong inspiration na nakapaloob sa kanyang buhay, lalong-lalo na po yung 
pag-asa. No? Yung, yung pag-asa sa mga nararanasan, lalo na po sa panahon ng pandemya ngayon. Si Bakita po, si Saint Bakita ay nag-suffer ng katakot-takot pero hindi po siya nawala ng pag-asa. Kung i-explore po natin yung buhay niya, um, makakapag-inspire po ito sa atin na magkaroon ng pag-asa pa lalo na sa hirap na nararanasan natin ngayon. At siya po ay a sister, uh, a Ocean sister, a universal sister, na ako po mismo ang nakakapagpatunay na meron po siyang gift of healing. So you can intercede for her. No? You can intercede uh, and pray for her. Pray to her para po sa gift of healing na kinakailangan ng makakilala nyo o ninyo mismo. At uh, like me, I am asking for forgive. Uh, I'm asking for the gift of forgiveness like her. Sa mga tao po na hindi rin, hindi pa rin handa para mapakapagpatawad, ay pwede din po natin siyang uh, maging inspirasyon sa kanyang gawa uh, o sa kanyang naging buhay dito sa mundo. Uh, alam ko po ngayon, kaya na sinabi ko sa inyo kanina na I'm working uh, with uh, uh, for anti anti trafficking no for the victims of trafficking human trafficking dati po kapag may mga injustices na nararamdaman ako nakikita ko i want to work with them so dala po yun ng galit but because of uh, constantly praying and uh, asking Saint Bakitas inspiration alam ko po na itong ginagawa ko ngayon na ito na pinaglalaban ko yung justice and even yung karapatan ng mga batang na naging biktima ng anti-trafficking. Alam kong hindi na po galit yun, kundi malasaki. So, muli po, uh, salamat po sa, sa inyong pag-invite uh, pag sa amin para maipakilala po si Saint Pakita and also na sana yung aking naging buhay, naging journey, especially with St. Josephine Bakita, ay marami pong ma-inspire ma para, para sila din ay mag-respond, lalo na po yung mga nakakarinig ng call ng Diyos for this kind of life. Sana ay kayo ay mag-respond courageously and all the graces will be given to you like us, like what we are experiencing now. Muli po, salamat sa inyo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Magnolia, for sharing your beautiful life story and for letting everyone know about St. Josephine Bakita. And now, lahat po kasi ng ating habit spoken sharers ay may kailangang sabihin at the end of our seg segment. So, Sister, please do the honors. I am Sister Magnolia Nuncio from the Canosian Daughters of Charity, and I have it spoken. Uh, Sir, really, it's a habit spoken. Yeah, yeah. Ho spoken by the habit. Yeah. <laughs> spoken. <laughs> Ang galing niyo po, Sister. Thank you really for sharing your life story. And it's very inspiring. Na Thank you so much. Thank Salamat you. din po. Napakaganda ng episode natin today, Sister Happy. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure tuwang-tuwa si Saint Josephine Bakita kay Sister Magnolia for being a witness and instrument in the telling her story to everyone. Kahabit Sister, Happy. <laughs> Anong masasabi nyo ng ating naging kwentohan? Actually, nung nag-goodbye tayo kay Sister Magnolia, sabi ko sa kanya, um, we are with you, sister, praying with you to have a forgiving heart. I think that's the contribution, the great contribution of St. Josephine Bakita. I also mentioned her humility and her forgiving heart. Sinabi nga kanina ni Sister Magnolia, um, walang, ano ba yun, walang, walang alam si, si, si St. Josephine Bakita, pero, o nga, wala siyang alam, marunong lang siyang magsulat ng pangalan niya, but, Doon sa walang alam na yun, 
marami siyang pinapaalam sa mundo. Marami siyang mm. pinapaalam sa atin. She taught us many things. Most especially that forgiveness, humility, simplicity. And I think this is the essence of our life as Christians and as people <laughs> in the world. I mean, we are born for what? And really, St. Joseph and Wakita has taught us in this time na maraming, I mean, so many sophisticated things, consumerism, materialism. But what is basic? What is essential? I think that it's the love of God. And we can always have that and we can also even give that. Mm -hmm. Yan po. Parang ako yata ang nag-speech nag nito. <laughs> Pero really, I was just so inspired by the testimony of, Saint, I, of Sister Magnolia. Yeah. How about you, Sister? <laughs> oh, parang ang reflection ko doon sa mga sinishare niya. Uh, every moment is a grace, right? Di mo alam in some situation, ikaw na pala yung ginawang instrument mm -hmm. para maipalaganap, yung pagmamahal, yung sakripisyo, pero yung kabanal-banala ni St. Josephine Bakita. At si Sister Magnolia ay ginawang instrument ng Panginoon. So, so grateful for that, na? Listening Sister, to you these stories. You, you, I heard that you went also to visit St. Josephine Bakita, Sister. Yeah, I went there uh, 2019. Yeah, 2000. Talagang that was my dream and my intention to visit the place since I'm working to end human trafficking. Mm -hmm. So that was also a blessing. Wow, what a privilege. <laughs> a moment of blessing that the Lord allows me to go to that place. Yes. So it's a nice um, segment, mga kahabits. Really, it's a habit spoken, nice and beautiful uh, life testimony of Sister Magnolia. And yeah, Yes, sister. <laughs> um, kayo naman, how are you inspired by St. Josephine Bakita? We want to hear from you. Let us know what you think, mga kahabits. Comment down below the live stream. Also visit our Facebook page at facebook.com amrsp.org and while you're there in our page click the like and follow buttons to be updated for more activities and live streams from amrsp and please support our live streams on facebook by sending us some stars you can buy stars and send them to us during the live broadcast for every star we receive, we earn 0.01 US dollars. So send some love, send some stars. Bisitahin nyo rin ang at ating YouTube channel. Just go to AMRSP Media where you can also watch our weekly broadcasts of The Habits, The Holy Rosary, and more contents from The Consecrated Life. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. Help us reach 1,000 subscribers. At hindi lang tayo mapapanood online dahil mapapanood nyo na rin ang The Habits sa TV Maria free channel every Sunday nights at 8.30pm with replays every Thursdays at 6am and 10pm. Kaya mga kahabits, let us stay connected. Again, let us thank Sister Magnolia Nuncio, FDCC, for being our habit spoken sharer today. Next week, we will be outside the habits studio for another on the spot episode. So, join us again as we implore consecrated life, the church, the world, and the society. This has been your Kahabit. Sister Adela Bamo of the Sisters of the Divine Savior. Thank you very much also, Sister Adele, yes. for being with us today and for joining us in our weekly religious routine. Mga Kahabits, so see you on our next episode. This is your Kahabit Sister. Happy 
Juan de Cilia of the Daughters of St. Anne, signing off from your weekly inspiration and information companion. We have been the Hubbins. Hubbins.